Look at that. Oh, you can almost see the legs of somebody. Right up the top there. Yeah, look, it's a person. <coughs> a person's legs. <coughs> look on the wall there as well. That would have been a shield here. That would have been a shield. West Front, this is the West Front, contained the main processional entrance into the cathedral. When the bell tower was started, a varsity window was placed in the West Front at the same time, but only the stubs remain. That's beautiful though, isn't it? That porchway there, look. It's beautiful, isn't it? Oh, look at that then. Certainly was a cathedral. Dunkeld, the capital of Scotland at the time. Probably before Edinburgh was. Right, we're going inside here. I don't know. It must be taken to the public. Ah, oh, I say, yeah. This is good. If people are at church, I can come in and have a look. Tells you a little bit about it. This room was used as a consistory court, a religious court that dealt with matters of marriage, adultery and inheritance. The space was richly decorated with symbolic images. High in the arches and on the vault ribs, some painted decoration survives to this day. The woman taken in adultery. On the south wall is another tale of a biblical justice. A woman who has been caught committing adultery was brought before Jesus. The crowd asked him whether they should stone her to death. Jesus replied that what, whoever among them was without sin should throw the first stone. One by one the crowd dispersed until Jesus was alone with the woman. He explained that she was not condemned, told her not to sin again and sent her on her way. I remember that tale actually. Judgment of Solomon. Wow, look at that. There's a gallery up there as well. That reminds me of um, Whirlbury. There's a little symbol there, look. I don't quite know what that is, some sort of creature. Well, it's worth coming in here, wasn't it? This monument commemorates a woman who died in 8, 1679. The stone has been broken, but the service is in good condition. The Reformed Church banned burials inside churches, but in some places, for those who could afford it, the practice continued. So this is some of the original. Look, there's a on that stone there we've got a someone on a horse. These stones were used to celebrate the glory of God and the lives of individuals connected with Dunkeld. A few of the stones are architectural, fragments of the carvings which once adorned the splendid cathedral. The rest are commemorative with wording and symbolism that tells us something about the person being remembered. We also get an insight into the society, learning what aspects of people's lives were considered important, enough to be commemorated in stone. The stones which were moved from here, from, from in and around the cathedral, demonstrate the continuity of worship at Dunkeld over the centuries. Signatures in stone, we've got there. On the 21st of August, 1689, the Battle of Dunkeld raged between government and Jacobite forces. The government regiment, which ultimately won the day, fortified the cathedral. 
Perhaps it was one of the soldiers who took a moment to leave his mark on this stone, inscribing his initials along with the date 1689. A soldier's mark. Hmm. The art of heraldry. Oh, yeah. Heraldry, that's right. The art of heraldry. Heraldry is a code that uses colours, patterns and emblems to proclaim what a person is and who their ancestors were. It originated from the need to distinguish combatants on the battlefield, with knights proudly displaying their coats of arms on their shields and banners. Over time, it became a universal language that could be used to emblazon anything from architecture to personal possessions. The origins of this stone are a mystery, but there may be a Viking connection. In 1903 AD, Dunkel's wealth made it a target for Viking raiders. The invaders had a lasting cultural influence in Scotland. The stone on display is hogback shaped, like the gravestones used by the Vikings. One side has traditional hogback decoration, but the other side bears a cross dating from 12th century. Is this a Viking stone carved in the 1900s and later remodelled? Or was the whole thing carved in the, twin, in the 12th century inspired by Viking design? Another hogback stone found at Govan near Glasgow. Hogbacks are thought to recall the Viking longhouses of Scandinavia with their scale-like decorations imitating roof tiles. A Viking stone. It's a weird looking thing, isn't it? It's a decorative stone. A bit, a bit like that one there. Look at that Viking stone there. A hogback. I must remember that. That looks like a sword to me. Going up there. Let me feel it. Might be an ancestor. Oh, it looks like we can go in the gallery, everyone. I reckon we can. Oh no. Might be another way in. There's another one. Let's have a woman. It's a big slab, isn't it? There's some fresco up there as well. I can see a bloke with a kilt on and a berry outlined. This would have been highly decorated, this building. Highly decorated, colourful. You've got to look out for signs. That is DL. <laughs> Duncan, you've been here before? Other signatures on the stones. People have put on this, often happened. Uh, other side, other little insignias written in stone. <sighs> they used to sharpen their swords up as well in some churches, actually. Yeah, that's a fresco, that is. Actually, that looks more like a monk now and a nun. I'm not quite sure what the middle figure is. Over and out for a minute. 